Kia ora everybody. Over the last few days I've noticed it really starting to set in with a lot of my friends and family just how tough lockdown can be on people. I mean, we've been at this nine or ten weeks now uh, in some parts of the country. Other parts of the country it feels like week to week they're getting updates and that's a really stressful thing for people to cope with. So I had a bit of an idea. When I was interviewing people and putting these interviews together there was one question I asked everybody and that was what advice they had to help people get through lockdowns and life with COVID and things like that. Um, so I've done this in two videos because I know what your attention span is like. I see all the metadata that comes through seeing how long people watch stuff for but I've done this in a couple of videos where I've just cut up that advice in the hope that if you're watching this that it gives you something to to consider, helps you cope with whatever it is that you're coping with at the moment. But at the same time, I'd just like to remind you all as well that if you need to reach out, feel free to, I'm happy to talk. But there are also other services out there as well that you can talk to, there's other people that you can talk to, and you're not alone in all this. It does feel very isolating when you feel like there's nobody around you and everything is kind of closing in and it gets really freaky. So I hope that this advice from the people that I've spoken to, who were very gracious in the advice that they gave, is something that can help you out. Because I think that's really important to listen to what other people are going through, and hopefully pick up something from them to, to learn with. So, here you go. I guess this is technically a clip show. Enjoy. Um, what I'd really encourage people to do, because I mean, the whole thing is is stressful. Even if it's enjoyable, it is still a big shift and a big change and our brain has to process that, our emotions have to process that. So there's a lot to have to deal with. It's a load, whether you enjoy it or not, it's a load. So I'd really encourage people who are feeling maybe just a little bit stressed out to sit down for a moment and write two lists. Uh, in terms of thinking through their world and what they're finding hard, think through what do I have control of? What do I not have control of? Uh, sometimes just getting that perspective is really helpful. And then just consciously putting aside the I don't have control of that list and understanding that there's just not much we can do about it. It's up to somebody else to worry about that stuff. It's not up to us to worry about. And then look at the list that we can control and work through how we might want to do those things a little bit uh, better. So for instance, the routine that I have, I can control what time I get out of bed. I can control how much I'm moving. I can control how much I eat. Uh, and so I've set goals around those things and I've taken control of those things. I, I don't have control on the emotions of my wife through this. I can feed into that, but I don't have control of that. Same goes with my daughter. Uh, so understanding those things, it's almost a 12-step program. <laughs> it's one of the elements of the 12-step program. There's a bit of that woven in there. But I'd also say, Set yourself some goals. Could be really small goals. Might be, I'm going to take a photo each day. Uh, and then you might go for a walk in your neighborhood and take some photos. It might be in your backyard taking some photos, but a photo each day. But set yourself some goals of what you want to have achieved by the time that we get to the end of this. Uh, not just for your work, but for yourself personally as well. Uh, because one of the dangers that kind of started to come into play at the end of uh, this last year in lockdown was people feeling just useless. Like there's no point. There was no point to getting up in the morning. There's no point to putting the clothes on. Yeah. So give yourself a point. You have control of that. It's a, it's a good time to obviously we're all kind of in the, in the same kind of position. We're all kind of, I don't want to say trapped, but um, we're, all, we're all in our own bubbles. So it is a good time to slow down. It is a good time to um, maybe pick up that paintbrush that you haven't touched in years or, you know, um, make something. Um, or if you, if, you know, if you love um, building stuff, um, you've got a bunch of wood in your garage and you've been meaning to finish the thing, whatever, like, in terms, um, I don't mean just kind of hobbies, but sort of, for me, just like keeping myself busy. Um, like for me, I have this, I have the nerd cave. Okay. I, I, I kind of, again, it's that, that switch that I kind of flip in my head of, okay, this is something that I need to get done. This is a task. This is a job. 
um, it's going to be onerous. I can't tell you how many bad words have come out of my mouth <laughs> from stripping like 40 year old wallpaper. <laughs> but I think about, you know, the future when this room will be, you know, pristine and beautiful and there'll be like framed art on the walls and there'll be like, you know, LED lights and it'll be my own kind of setup and it'll be my space. It'll be your fortress of solitude. It will. Mm. (laughs) It will be my fortress. And that, that has sort of kept me sane in a sense, having, having that, that goal, that task, whatever your goal is, whatever your task is, it might just be, you know, catching up with, some old mates that you haven't, you know, spoken to that anything that's kind of been on your mind um, that you haven't gotten around to um, just, yeah, just, just keep yourself busy. I think the worst thing we can do is just kind of stew and sit and scroll and, you know, just kind of get lost in the soup of, you know, media and, you know, (laughs) just like crappy YouTube videos which is uh, which is my kryptonite? So many rabbit holes to fall down, and just so much time to waste. Um, it's almost like we have time. Like as a family, we know that we've been given this time, um, and we're trying to use it to just kind of slow down and be a family and enjoy the time as much as possible. So I, I guess coming back around to your question, find what. Um, find what you can to like find a way to enjoy the time for for, for yourself in lockdown I think it's important I think it's even it it could be colouring I love colouring it's so relaxing I haven't seen many people do that this time around first time they did uh, first time I've been seeing lots of it I I I haven't done it yet I don't think I'm there yet okay um yeah, yeah, but it, it's it's zen. So find it, find your zen. Well, uh, the first thing is get a routine. You have to get a routine. You have to stick to it. You can't take it easy. You, you gotta just discipline yourself a little bit to stick to a certain routine, because once it changes too much, you will start feeling a little bit disturbed, and that will bring you down. That's number one. Number two, uh, find new interesting things. Once you do something new and then you do it better, this is a good feeling. So chase that. And then the third thing, plan for what's after. So what's after? Um, to me, I'm, I'm like, I, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to do that. I got a couple of things that I want to, um, you know, get started with after the lockdown. And that will keep you excited and a little bit more organized and productive. So, um, yeah, yeah. And, and it doesn't matter what happens. Um, just always be positive, play a silly song and dance to it. You know, that, that kind of brings joy. Uh, if you're living with family or flatmates or stuff like that, you be the one who's, you know, bringing this positive energy in because it irradiates Paul. Like you wouldn't believe it. Um, once I come in hyped as hell, everybody gets happy. You know what I mean? Um, and that's what you want. That's what you want. You, you want to go through it, uh, feeling good, uh, and the people around you to feel good and the people around you to feel good to have you, um, in the same bubble as them. Yeah. Oh, I think, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I think for, for, for me and for the, the advice I keep giving my team when I'm, I'm talking to my staff is that. Um, to really reflect on what it is that you need, you know, because we all need slightly different things. I know um, I need some physical activity. Um, One of my team members is a gardener and she needs to get out into the garden. Uh, Another team member actually wants to sit on the the couch and watch TV. You know, it's about identifying what works for you and not trying to do all the things people say you should be doing and, and really looking at what brings you joy what relaxes you you know what what gives you that time out so sorry let me hang that up (laughs) 
That's right. I've, I've had like three emails come in in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, you know, I talked about enriching behaviours for dogs. I think that we need the same sort of thing for ourselves. And taking those moments, um, just before lockdown, I, I went and had a play with clay and I did some I did some pottery and I hadn't done that for a very long time. But it reminded me how, like when I say a long time, I would have been a child, <laughs> but it reminded me of how much I loved that. And then I thought, you know what else I used to love was hearing someone read me a story. I used to love that as a kid. And so I ended up going into um, Borrow Box at the library and downloading an audio book. And so I'm being read to now through an audio book. And actually, it's just really cool. <laughs> so I think it's, it's about being a little bit creative, perhaps, um, and looking for those things that bring you joy and, and spending time doing them. Don't feel guilted into, I should be baking bread. <laughs> you know, I should be walking for three hours. Yeah. I shouldn't be drinking this wine. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely don't feel guilty about that at the moment. No, no. So <laughs> yeah, it brings you joy, and and I think um, maintaining those connections with people, and even if that has to be, um, you know, virtually, it's certainly better than than being isolated. And I think um, I I love the fact that that we can speak face to face to people. Can you imagine yeah. if this had happened in the eighties? No, you know? that would have been a nightmare. I would have had to talk to my <laughs> parents and my siblings. <laughs> Yeah. So I mean this is a whole other way that we can we can stay connected. So yeah, that'd probably be my advice. Yeah. If you can, if you can breathe through your nose like you don't have a deviated septum or something, you know, uh, kind of chronic up there, um, explore taping your mouth at night. So what I'd say to people is sit in front of the TV, put a piece of tape over your mouth. And see how it feels. Do that for a couple of hours every day, and then have a go at doing it at night. Now, the urge to breathe is the most powerful urge of all of them. So you're not going to suffocate. Okay, you, you're actually more likely to suffocate if your mouth breathing because you're going to have sleep apnea. Yeah. That's suffocation. You're going to drop your oxygen level so low that you're going to give yourself, you know, a, a raft of BS. Um, restore nasal breathing is nature's gift and i'd say it doesn't matter what i say what anyone else says if you're having eight hours a night of bad sleep you can expect um, those things to come back and haunt you so be brave do some um, googling um, tape up that mouth i know that sounds weird but it is we live in weird times for just um Oh, crikey, that's a real hard one. Um, yeah, and to be honest, most of the, the, the I, I feedback guess, I've had from everyone has been very similar. It, it is tough. I think, and, and probably the probably the answer you get from everybody is pretty similar too, is actually just enjoy what you can, live in the moment yeah. while you can, um, and accept what you can't do in the time being. And, and you, yeah, now we've been given time. Uh, we, we won't get this time again. You know, we won't get this much time again. Um the machine will find ways of making us work <laughs> if we get locked down even more. Oh, I know the um, feeling. Yeah, mate, I was well, it was awful last time. You know, Zoom came up just at yeah. the same time as the last COVID did, and all of a sudden I, you know, I had Paula Southgate in my office and I couldn't get rid of her. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. During, I know the feeling. during normal times, you can walk away. Yeah. <laughs> but no. <laughs> um so just just yeah, just enjoy it. Just yeah. Make make the changes you need to change. Come out of it like you've been on a big holiday, you know, and um yeah mike king put it well he said this is a really good opportunity for people to form bonds with their families yeah um that they they didn't have beforehand um you know and you don't necessarily have to be uh stressed about it you can actually go and play hopscotch you can yeah. go and do four square you can do rid ridiculous stuff but yeah the oh, the fun things. Things. that's all i wish you give me pre pre warning about that question oh. that's a hard one i uh, have a have a support crew Mm -hmm. Have a group of people that you talk to on the regular and find something that you have that um, you can switch your brain off and do, uh, be it gaming, movies, books, uh, cooking, um, walking, anything like that. Find something that you're that doesn't even need to be something you're passionate about, something that you can do um, that gets you through it when and if you 
feel that you're struggling and you need help and you talk to someone and talk to someone. Don't let the fact that you can't see someone face to face stop you from talking to them and check in on, like I said, on my, on my thing, when, when, um, when everything happened yesterday morning, when we woke up and we found out that Daphne had passed away, check in on your friends, not just the ones who you know are suffering, but everyone, because yeah. um, you never know when somebody doesn't know how to reach out. This may not work for everybody, right? So, and I, like I said, I live in a situation where I live with my wife. So it's going to be different for anyone who lives on their own and stuff. But we have started sort of instating things that we do regularly that give us something to look forward to. Because at the moment, outside of anything you create, you don't have anything to look forward to. We don't know when lockdowns were ending. We don't know, you know, it, it is easy to go down a spiral so we created things like friday night we would uh, have a date night and it would be on one of us to come up with what we were going to do that night so we've done things like literally we had a night at the opera last year which was literally so it was um because andrew lloyd Webber started giving away on youtube um entire um Opera is free on YouTube, like Phantom of the Opera and all that was free on YouTube. Um, so we got dressed up to the nines and we got some wine delivered. And I even made goggles uh, out of uh, toilet roll holders, <laughs> and toilet rolls. And we did literally with the whole nine yards at home to give ourselves an experience at home. Um, we set up a pub night where we pretended we were going to the pub. It's dumb, right? I don't know. But it's given you something to look forward to. Like we did yeah. karaoke and we had a few drinks and we ordered spa snacks and <laughs> that's all that sort of thing. But the other thing, like, so we've done stuff like that. The other thing is uh, every Saturday we, because we've started watching lots of cooking videos on YouTube and stuff like that. So now what we do is we, every Saturday we try and create a meal from something we've learned. And we do that together in the kitchen. And I think these are the things as well, right? So making sure that we're creating moments for us to do things together. Because otherwise, it's really easy to retreat from each other in these periods too. Or sit in the lounge and watch TV together, but you're not doing anything together, right? Everyone on their phone. Exactly. Yeah. Um, So making that's one thing. The other one is while you're in the same house together and it's important to do things together, it's also super important to have time for yourself. And this is actually something I learned in therapy that I went through a couple of years ago because I was, I spent so much of my career and my life doing stuff for other people and with other people. Um, I had never sort of stopped to give myself moments. Uh, And I think from that learning, I've learned you know, it's important for us to take time to it for ourselves as well. So I did things like personal little projects. And I think these personal little projects are important. I didn't have one for the last two months, but if you have a look at my background, I've got a pinball machine. I was going to say, I, I, I can see some personal projects in the background there that I've seen. Yeah, I made that pinball machine from scratch. How long does that take? So that took me weeks of research yeah. and about three days to make it. Oh, okay. That's but that's because fast. I had time and resources to do yeah. it, right? So I've got a, enough tools to do it. And most of the shit was made out of stuff I actually found on the side of the road. Oh, wow. We have regular roadside collections mm-hmm. here in Sydney. And so it was like wood dumped on the side of the road. TVs dumped on the side of the road. Um, i tell you what, that's a whole different podcast to talk about the difference <laughs> between the culture shock with moving to this country and things where you just see like... People have way too much money here. Um, That's why people but, move there. Right. But the thing is, like, I made that sort of thing. The other one is I, I, I modded myself a, another arcade machine. Um, uh, my wife is currently doing up a push bike. That she, oh, wow. we, and we started, like, doing all these little projects. So currently, at the moment, I bought myself a secondhand DJ setup because I used to DJ 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I haven't done it for years. And I was like, 
I'm going to learn how to DJ again. Yeah. With modern technology. <laughs> Back then, I was using mini discs and CDs and stuff like that. So The old-fashioned way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to learn how to do that with again. And it, really it, but cool. I think like those sort of projects for yourself are super important. Easy. Um, and that, that, I don't think they have to be as complicated as learning how to build a pinball machine. But <laughs> giving yourself some time to yourself to sort of get away and give yourself something to achieve as well because yeah. I think that's another thing is outside of work and your relationships at the moment um, we have nothing else 